What's happening, my YouTube family? I am excited about the series for the month of June. It is entitled God of a Breakthrough. Where do we get that from? It is what God gave us for 12 hour prayer. So we're gonna teach on that. Breakthrough in your finances, breakthrough in your family, breakthrough in your spirit, breakthrough in your home. What area do you need a breakthrough in? And we're gonna make sure that we give you the scriptures to make sure you get that breakthrough. Why? Because he's the God of a breakthrough. Come on, you two, let's do this. The theme for 12 hour prayer is God of a breakthrough. And I don't care what you go through, how many of y'all still believe that he has all power? It is impossible to come to him and not believe that he can do it. Even when you feel like you've eat, reached your end and you have no strength, do you believe that God has all power, that he could do anything? The Bible says, he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. He has all power. Even what looks like is impossible, he can flip that thing just like that. Those of y'all that believe that God has all power, come on, open your mouth and say, God has all power. There is nothing too hot for him. So, for, for 12 hour prayer, it's called the God of a breakthrough. When you come in the lobby, you're going to see 12 walls with 12 different subjects. You find your subject and you write it on that wall. For 12 hours, intercessors will be assigned to those walls in the lobby that will consistently pray over the wall that you believe that God could break through. Come on, if you believe that God still got time to do it, come on, open your mouth and say, he has all power. So all month, we just want to increase your faith. If I can get your faith up, it'll blow your mind what he could do for you. Hear me clearly. Tonight, today, I want to speak from the subject, breakthrough in my family, in my house. You got to make up your mind. The devil cannot live where I pay rent. If you paying a mortgage, you can't stay up in here. You can't even let the devil come stand up in your bedroom. The devil is alive. The Bible says he gives us his angels charge. I need angels at the front door, the back door, and on every side of me. A breakthrough in your family. The devil can't have your kids. He cannot have your family. And until you get a pit bull mentality, you can't, be, watch me, do not give a devil a permission slip where they just going through a little season. The devil is alive. This seed of mine belong to God. My friends belong to God. My family belong to God. And I'm not going to stand back and just let the enemy have his way. I belong to God. Come on, y'all. So I want to talk about your family because some of y'all, you've abandoned some people that really are supposed to look out for you. And some of y'all, you're the bridge. You're the only way that they're going to get prayers because of you. Even though they get on your last nerve, you assigned to that family. Can I show you the scripture in Proverbs 17 and 17? Friends love all the time. And kinfolk, can you believe that word is in the Bible? I thought that was a hood word. Are born for times of trouble. The good news says friends come and go, but family sticks with you during the hardest of times. Examples of you being there for family in the Bible. When David was chased to the cave of Adullam, the first ones to meet him in that cave was his brothers. When the mother child died in her arms, she didn't run to anybody. She put the child in the room and then she got up as the intercessor to get to the man of God and say, you got to come back to my house and flip this thing. When Jairus' daughter went from sick to being dead, Jesus looked at Jairus and said, don't doubt, just believe. If you believe, keep leading me to your house. And then when Jesus got to the house, Jesus put out the house, everybody that shouldn't be in the house. What has God been doing? He's been putting some people out of your life that shouldn't be in your life because they don't want to see your situation get better. Today, we're going to look at it and encourage you to cover your house because where your house is, is where your family is. 
Don't allow the enemy to have your house because if you give him your house, he's going to get your family. Luke 19, we're going to see where Jesus is determined to get to a man's house to save his family. Nudge your neighbor and say, God's about to go to your house. Come on, just nudge him. You ain't got to look at him. Just nudge, nudge, him, nudge him and say, God's about to come to your house. He's about to save your family. You ready? Let's read in Luke 19. Luke 19, we're going to talk about the young man by the name of Zacchaeus. What blows my mind is that I teach you that Matthew, Mark, and Luke are known to be synoptic gospels. What you find in one, you'll find in the other. Luke is different. He's the physician. There's certain things that Luke mentioned that no other gospel mentioned. Zacchaeus is one of the things that he zoned in on that none of the other writers found it to be important. But Luke says, no, a time is going to come that it's going to be some modern day Zacchaeus. And I want to make sure that you get the revelation on why you've been going through what you've been going through. And God is determined to get to your house and to get your family. You ready? Let's read it. In Luke 19, starting at verse 1, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He's a baller. Shot caller, bling, bling, rolling on some D's. Listen, he wanted to see who Jesus was, but because I don't like this part, he was short. Why do we need to know he was a short man? That's not important. He could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree just to see him since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached that spot, he looked up and said to him without Zacchaeus saying anything, you in the right location, you just in the wrong spot. When you get in the right spot, he's going to honor your ship. Come on here. He says, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today because I might not come this way again. But while I'm in the building on the first Sunday in June, I want you to know I'm coming to your house. I'm not coming next week. I'm not coming next month. Today is about to be your day. And he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. Allow me to give you just a few facts about Zacchaeus. Ready? Bring it up on the screen. Zacchaeus, his name means pure or innocent. Number two, we know that he lived in a house and he lived in a city called Jericho. Number three, we understand that his occupation, that he wasn't just a, a tax collector. He's a chief tax collector, which means that he's the one that's running certain departments. His economical status is he is wealthy. Physically, again, I don't know why we need to know this, but I'll, I'll take it. He is a short man. Look at him. His present state is desperation. How do you know he's desperate? He wanted to see who Jesus was. Why does he want to see who Jesus is? Because he's heard already different things that God has done. Question me, that's why you cannot stop telling people what God has done for you. Because when you tell people what God has done for you, it makes them believe that he could do it for them too. And some of y'all are sitting next to or around a miracle problem they don't look like what they've been through mm -mm. you'll never believe they've been through the hell that they've been through somebody say well how could i tell you watch they praise because when they think of the goodness watch me you don't have to know me you don't have to understand me because you don't know what i know what he did for me my praise speaks louder Ready? He wanted to see who Jesus was. But because he was short, I'm not going to use that as an excuse not to see him. 
He could not see over the crowd. I'm not going to let the crowd stop me either. So what did he do? So he ran ahead of them get ahead of the crowd. Climb up a sycamore fig tree. Get ahead of the crowd because somebody going to tell you that it don't take all of that. It might not take all of that because you can see based on your height. But based upon where I am, I got to put forth a better effort than everybody else. Stop comparing yourself to other people because you might have to work a little harder than them. Come on here. You might not have to go through what I've been through, but I refuse to go home the way... Th so he ran ahead of them and climbed up a fig tree, desperation, to see him since he knew that Jesus was coming that way. Now, if I show you something, I'm going to show you something. Based on certain things in this list, he should be fine. What are those? You got a job. You good. You got a house. You good. You got money. You good. Mm, that's outward stuff. But you don't know what's going on on the inside. You got a job, you good. You got a house, you good. You got wealth, you good. And people look at your material things and think that you're good, but they don't know there's some things that keep you up at night. There's some things that trouble you at the midnight hour. I smile on the outside, but behind my smile, I am going through a little something, something. What's me? And you got to be spiritual enough to pick up where I am in the spirit. Come on, y'all. Based upon a job, you good. Based upon your house, you good. Based upon your money. If, I was, if it would be good with just those three, then people that have job, houses, and wealth wouldn't be depressed. People that have jobs, houses, and wealth wouldn't be trying to kill themselves. People that have jobs, watch me, they would be happy, which means, watch me, material stuff don't make you. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me? Y'all not going to say nothing to me? So some of y'all got money, but you're more miserable. Come on here. Some of y'all got a house, but it's a house of hell. He is not fine. He is not in a good space. He is not in a good space. How do you know he's not in a good space? You ready? Because when Jesus reached the spot. What did he do? He looked up. Watch me. He only comes when there's a need. See, everybody else was in the crowd, but watch me. But this man separated himself from the crowd, went up in this tree, and when Jesus saw him, he didn't see his job. He didn't see his house. He did not see his wealth. He saw where he was emotionally. He saw where he was spiritually. He saw that he was at a breaking point. He saw that, watch me, I got to get you before the devil kill you. I got to get you before you lose your mind. I got to get you before the enemy have his way. So he literally looked up and called the man, watch me, by name and never asked him his name. Zacchaeus, watch me, watch me. Zacchaeus, what you want me to do? Come down immediately. Which means that whatever you've been going through, you've reached the end of it. It's about to be immediately in your house. I, need to, I don't know how long you've been going through it, but I'm about to do it for you immediately. Guys, I don't know about you, but certain words, when I grab that thing, I stand on it, and I believe that it can happen for me. I believe in the power of words. Can everybody release the word immediately in the house? Immediately in your body, immediately in your finances, immediately in your marriage, immediately in your... I need some of y'all to make sure you're not sitting next to dead weight. Because when I move, I might need you to move with me. I need you to make sure that you're ready for a blessing like us. Me, I went through too much to get here. And I refused to go home the way I came. I had to climb a tree. I had to get over depression. I had to get over what I went through last night. I'm in the building. He's about to call my name. I need a miracle win. When do you need it? I'm talking about before you go back to work tomorrow. I'm talking about before you get home. I'm talking about before next month. I'm talking about before next year. I need God to do something for me. Come on, you ain't got to say it to nobody. Those of you that need a miracle, you open your mouth and just say the word immediately. Okay, let's go.
Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I can't go another year. I can't go another day. I can't go another week. I need God to do it. Watch me. I'm putting myself in his way. I hear it. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to stay calm. I'm really doing my best. But that word immediately, that thing make me want to jump in. That thing let me know that God is ready to do something for me. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's talk. Let's talk. Have a seat. Have a seat. Let's talk. Let's talk, let's talk. When he got to the spot and he looked up, he said, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I mean, immediately. Here's the line I like. I must clear your house out. I'm not doing a drive-by either. I must stay in your house until every area is clean. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. I'm gonna stay there until I drive out what's been keeping you awake at night. I'm gonna stay there until I shut the mouth of your enemy. I'm gonna stay there until I bring you back to a place called peace. You're not gonna live in turmoil. Yay! Shia. I better bring it in. Bring it back, John. Bring it in. Because I feel my thugs standing up. Because the violent take it by force. You don't need no whip around you right now. You need somebody that believe that now unto him that is able. Have a seat. Stop. So what's going on? So what's going on? Sit down. Sit down. So what's going on with you? So tell me what's going on with you. What's going on with you? That he looking at you saying, no, I got to get you today. What's going on with you? What's going on? See, everybody else looking at your house, looking at your money, and looking at your job. But he said, I'm, I, I'm looking past your house. I'm looking past your money. I'm looking past your job, but I'm watching your spirit. I've been monitoring your mindset. And I'm seeing where the enemy trying to make you lose your mind. I've been monitoring your stress level. And the enemy, the silent killer is stress. But I came to break stress up off you today. No, no, no. So what's going on? Come on, let's go. I want to show you certain things were pulling on him. Certain things were pulling on him. And as we look in this room, in the spirit, there are certain things that keep pulling on you. I'm holding my stomach in there. I want you to know I, I'm trying to breathe. Small breaths. You ready? So what's pulling on him? Come on, let's go. Number one, he's been pulled on by his house. And for some of y'all, it all weighs on you. It weighs, come on, give me my same guys. It weighs on you. It weighs on you that your house is pulling on you. And some of y'all, you the child. But you got to carry your parent. Some of y'all, you the youngest, but the whole house keep pulling on you. They always call you when something go wrong. Number two, he's been pulled on by his job because he was a chief tax collector. Look at me. If you are a tax collector, you work for the man. You work for the Roman government, and they, watch me, and you're not just a tax collector, you got a staff under you. And those at the top always get blamed by those at the bottom. They trifling, but they blame you. They don't do what they're supposed to do, but they blame you. Come on, y'all. And it's a pull on you. The third pull is that you're pulled on to meet others' needs. I need, I need to stay right here. What do you mean by that? When the scripture says, and was wealthy, everybody can't handle the fact that you have money because they feel like their bills should become your bills. And if you want to stay wealthy, there's one word that you must keep in your back pocket. No. 
Come on here. And I come against manipulation, control, where they try to make you feel bad because you won't give them. And you know that they're not going to do good. Watch me. Pay my rent. If I pay your rent this month, how you going to pay it next month? I'm just trying to say, and some of y'all, you're being pulled on by people that even think you got money because you even look like you got it. They don't know what your, your balance is. You just learn not to wear your stress. Come on here. Come on here. And God is your Jehovah Jireh. He been taking care of you. They think that you didn't won the lottery. I am not won the lottery. He just answered my prayer. He just, as a matter of fact, I can't believe I'm as blessed as I am either. Number four, you're being pulled on by the opinions of people. The Bible says that when Jesus started talking to him, all the people saw this, saw just the conversation and began to mutter, he has gone to, to be with guests of a sinner. And some of y'all, you are allowing the opinions of other people to shut you down. You got to hear me. Watch me. The higher you go, the more people have an opinion of you. He could have talked to anybody, but he stopped to talk to you. Can I tell you something? Favor ain't fair. And you might as well stop trying to explain your favor. Can I tell you something? If you don't like me before I get my healing, what you gonna do with me when I... <laughs> and some of y'all, I am watching you, I am watching you dumb me down because of the opinions of people and that thing is pulling on you. The next one is the pull on your house. What do you mean, I mean on, on yourself? What do you mean by that? His name means pure or innocent and he is not living up to his name. And some of us, we are our greatest enemy because we feel like we're never good enough. We're not where we should be. So you're harder on yourself, especially when you start looking at other people. Can I tell you something? The enemy will love to love to highlight where you are not but if you look back over your life you're not where you used to be y'all not gonna say that to me so if you can just thank him for a little progress I might not be all the way there but I'm not where I used to be is there anybody that can see some form of progress can we just shut this devil down right here there's a pool on his emotions because he hates his job. And some of y'all, you hate it, but you don't have a choice. You hate even going there. And the only reason you're there is because something called light bill, gas bill, condo, and kids. I get it. The next thing, you feel that you have to do what you have to do. Because if you don't do it, nobody else would do it. The next point is the fear of quitting, of quitting. Gosh, me, it's easy to say step out by faith, but not when you got responsibilities. Not when you understand. Watch me. And you're like, well, you don't trust God. I do trust him, but I got to take care of my business. Oh, y'all ain't going to say that to me now. Y'all ain't going to say that to me now. The next point is to take it. You take it out on those that you're closest to. So now you start going off and screaming at people who actually don't have anything to do with your pressure. So now you create an atmosphere of conflict and confrontation. And you know that is not you. The tenth pool, I just left a question mark. Because the question is, what is it that's been pulling on you lately? So when everybody else is looking at the house, when everybody else is looking at the job, when everybody else is looking at the wealth, can I show you what Jesus sees? He sees this. He sees a man that is at a point that is about to be broken. He sees a man that is being pulled, that is literally being pulled but everybody's dependent upon him. He sees a man that wants to get out, but he can't get out. I'm smiling, but I'm being pulled on. Even when I come to church, I need somebody to pray for me, but they be putting a demand on me to pray for them. I'm crying and can't nobody see my tears. Stop.
I'm sitting next to you, but do you feel my pull? Do you feel my pull? Do you see I'm not going, I'm not as happy as I used to be? Do you see I'm not praising God the way I used to praise God? I need him, 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 I need him. I need him, I need him, I need him, I need him, I need him. Everybody lift your hands. I hear the Lord telling me to tell you, you're in a safe space. You don't have to be there for anybody. Today I am here for you. y'all trying to get back on your spot but you're still getting pulled safe space lift your hands close your eyes throw your head back safe space safe space your money don't mean nothing your house don't mean nothing your job don't mean nothing you're in a safe space Ace, hey, 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 listen to me. You can be human. <laughs> you can be human. You don't have to be a superman. You don't have to be a superwoman. You can be human right now. Come on, lift your hands and say, help me, 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 help me. And when Jesus, and when Jesus, and when Jesus, and when Jesus, and when Jesus reached that spot, he looked up and said to him, he looked up and saw him being pulled on. He looked up and saw him being yanked and he called his name. On the count of three, if you watch me, I just need you to say your name and then I'll say the rest. But I need you to say your name because heaven is about to call your name. Heaven is about to call your name. On the count of three, say your name. One, two, three. Come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. On the count of three, say your name again. One, two, three. Come down. Hey, Gail, come down immediately. Hey, hey, Dawn, come down immediately. Hey, Cynthia, come down immediately. Hey, Lane, come down immediately. I must, I must, I must, I must pay you a visit today. Today. I could have came sooner, but today is about to be your day. Lift your hands. You're in a safe space. Ambassadors with the water and the, and the handkerchief, stand still. Stand still. Put the, put the handkerchiefs down. Put the water down. Because you all need a breakthrough too. Hey, camera people, I'm not going to budge. I'm going to stand right here. Put the camera on me. Because some of y'all behind the camera in the production room. I'm not going to move. Set everything up. Because I need to give you just a space. It I must see a security. Just take a moment. <laughs> Lift your hands. Come down immediately. Come down immediately. 
Come down. Forget about your title. Forget about your money. Come down immediately. Forget about your responsibilities. Come down immediately. Forget about the hell you've been through. Come down immediately. The only reason I came here is because I knew that I would be looking for you. I only come where there's a need. Don't you stand there in arrogance and act like you don't need him. You need me like a fish need water. I feel you. I feel you. I feel the weight of this. I feel the pressure of this. I feel that thing draining you. But I cannot let you die. I cannot let you die. I cannot let you die. You in a safe space today. Let's not have a church. Can we have a safe space? Can I be human? Can you be human? Yeah, y'all die. Every man say, help me, Lord. Every woman say, help me, Lord. Every parent say, help me, Lord. Every boss say, help me, Lord. Everybody that's know you the head say, help me, Lord. Every independent person, everybody that know you on your own, I need you to lift your hands and say, help me, Lord. Help me, 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 help me. I must, I must. I must, I must, I must come get you today. Because if I don't get you today, the enemy going to try to make you stroke out. If I don't get you today, you're going to do something that you cannot do. You're going to act the way that I don't want you to act. I got you. 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 Come on, y'all. Just for 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Take your cape off. For 10 seconds. Take your cape off. <laughs> Take your cape off for 10 seconds. Take your title off for 10 seconds. You ain't got to be a hero. You can be human. Uh, You don't have to be strong. You ain't got to be strong. Have a moment. I must come to your house today. I got to get you today. I got to get you today. I have to get you today. Because if I don't get you today, you have an aneurysm tomorrow. If I don't get you today, you have a stroke. If I don't get you today, you're going to go back to doing some stuff that you know don't even go with you anymore. That's how come I got to get you today. Everybody hear me? This ain't no church right now. You're in a safe space. Ain't nobody going to judge you. Ain't nobody going to talk about you. If you want to lay on the floor, you can lay on the floor. If you want to walk, you can walk. If you want to leave for a minute and step out, you can step out. Come over here because he's about coming to get you today. 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 Everybody open your mouth and put a worship on your lips just for 10 seconds. Don't clap. Don't clap. I need 10 seconds of nothing but a sound of desperation in this building. Ooh. Ooh. Who delivers the deliverer? Who helps the strong? Who leads the leader? Who has faith for the person that has faith for everybody else? Today. 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 Hey, bruh. Hey, bruh. You ain't got to be strong today. You ain't got to act like you're the man today. You could drop your guard and stop trying to be so hard and strong. You breaking. You are breaking. And until you humble yourself and admit that you're not in a good space. See, you got to admit that you're not in a good space in order for him to get you out of that space. I'll give you 10 more seconds to strip yourself of your pride. Some of y'all, you keep fighting the tears. Let them go. You're in a safe space. Ain't nobody going to talk about you. (laughs) 
I want, to, I, want, I, want, I want you to hear me. I want you to hear me. So how do, you, how do you get the God of a breakthrough to come through? How do you get the God of a breakthrough to come through? Number one, the fact that you got up. Number one, the fact that you're in the building. Number one, the fact that you're online. Number one, the fact that you put forth the effort. Let me at least try to, watch me, look at me. You did not come here looking for me. You did not come here looking for John Hanna. You didn't come to John Hanna house. John Hanna don't live here. This is the Lord's house. You, watch me, he gonna use me to talk to you, but this ain't me. I don't heal you. I don't deliver you. I don't make a way for you. I don't pay your bills. God's about to be your hero, your Superman. He's about to be the one. You didn't come here looking for me. Can I tell you something? And he's about to honor the fact that you get to God. You literally got to God. You finally realize, listen, I need God. Can I say this? He, so he ran ahead, climbed a sycamore fig tree to, to see him since Jesus was coming in that direction. Watch me. When you draw not a God, he draws not a you. When you get up and say, I just need to hear the word, then he gets the word ready for you. He's going to honor you showing up. He's going to honor you tuning in. Watch me. Watch me. Watch me. Some of y'all, the devil told you, stay at home. You ain't got to go today. But you fought anyway. You went through hell just to get in the building. And I came to tell you, he's about to honor your fight. He's about to honor your... Then you got, what's that, what's that? Then you got to admit, he see me. He sees me. He sees me. He hears me. He understands exactly where I'm. What do you mean by that? You got to see God in your furnace. You got to see him in your lion den. You got to see him. Wait, wait, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? When Jesus reached that spot, he looked up without him even opening his mouth, without him saying a word. Everybody lean in one minute. He sees me. What do you mean? When I've been preaching, it's almost like I got a camera in your house. It's almost like I am literally watching. I know what you're going through. Look at me. I don't know what you're going through, but he knows everything. And as I speak to you, he's literally hitting your spirit. What is that? Send you. He really gets me. He really sees me. He really knows where I am. Can I tell you something? Hey, wait, wait, wait. I feel a praise break right here. Because at one point, I thought that he didn't see me. At one point, I thought that he didn't hear me. But the fact that he prepared a meal for me and he got a table in the presence of my enemy, I owe him a praise. For the setup on the count of three, give God a praise for picking you up. Give God a praise. y'all I need you to make sure you're next to somebody who know I'm in the right place at the right time with the right people I'm in the right place at the right time I'm in my spot yay you just need to look back up with your praise and say, can you help me give God a praise for the setup? Release the praise right here. Go, go, go. It's getting ready to happen immediately. 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 Some of y'all haven't been here in a while, but today he made sure you were in the building. It's a divine appointment. It's a divine setup. I didn't even want to come, but he made me come. Plan on getting up, but he woke me up. Yay! Yay! Come on, y'all. I need to 
prophesy. Come on, say immediately. Today. Immediately. It's a 911. It's an emergency. Before I cut somebody out. Before I quit my job. Before I snap, crackle, and pop. Immediately. Immediately. I don't know how long you've been under the pressure. But I know how fast you're going to get up out of it. Yeah, y'all see. Your blood pressure about to come down. Your heart about to start beating right. That numbness is about to disappear. You about to get your smile back. You about to get you back. I got up. And he see me. <laughs> he see me. Jollop, he see me. You looking at the house. You looking at the money. I don't care about no money. I need God to do something for me. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. I didn't want to get up, but I got up. I didn't feel like coming, but I came. I didn't feel like listening, but I'm listening. I didn't want to be bothered, but I'm here anyway. I went out last night. I'm tired, but I'm still here. It's me. It's me. It's me, oh Lord. It's me. It's me. Who preached to the preacher? Who helped the strong? Who's there for the one that's always there? I hear the Lord say, I'm your hero. I'm your superman. Give God a praise right here. Go. It's me. It's me. It's me, oh Lord. It's me. Come on, tap yourself. It's me. It's me. It's me, oh Lord. Standing in the knee. Ready? Let's, let's go. Do you notice that those that were pulling me are gone, but I'm still holding on what the enemy has already released. <laughs> and some of y'all, they're not there, but you keep dragging what they did and how they handled you. <laughs> Nobody's holding you. Now comes something that you going to have to do. See, the, hard, the worst part is that we just expect him to come out the sky and to rescue us. He said, no, certain things you going to have to do. You gonna have to. I'm not gonna send nobody to take this off for you. You gonna release this up off for you. Certain things you gonna have to do. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? If you want the God of a breakthrough to come to come through for you, you gonna have to make some personal changes. You gonna have to make some personal 
changes. What do you mean? When they, when, when, when they start talking about him, he said, look, Lord, he, he, he said, about to say, and he stood up and said, Lord, look, 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 look at me. I am willing to give half my possession to the poor. And anybody that I cheated, I'll go back and pay them four times. He didn't even ask me to do that. Watch me. But I'm telling you, if it's going to get some of this off of me, if I got to stop being around certain people, I'll let them go. Are they going to say that to me? If I got to close my ears to foolishness, I love you, but I can't talk to you right now. If I got to stop sleeping with somebody, y'all ain't going to say that to me now. Because every time I sleep with you, it take me somewhere that I ain't got no business being. So it comes to a point that you personally have to step out of some stuff. And I make, I make a conscious decision. Look at me. We can't be that close no more. That's a conscious decision. Because evil communication corrupts good manner. And I have allowed you to take me somewhere. You have, watch me. I'm up at night and you sleep. Something wrong with this picture. I'm struggling and you... You keep asking me, and then the moment I say no, then you don't want to be bothered with me. Let hear me. No! So to get the so question, question. So what personally, hit the Lord, hit the Lord. What personally do you need to change in the middle of the year that is not your issue for the rest of the year? What personally do you need to change? What personally do you need to change? Like, who do you need to leave on the altar? What, what's pulling on you? Tell me. It, it, listen, listen. Because you got to make sure. You, okay, lean in. Lean in. Lean in. You got to make sure that you're not the enabler. The only way you feel important is that somebody pull on you. Which means that you're not used to walking around free. Because what gives you value is people need you and need you and need you. And you don't never hang around people that are on your level. <laughs> So you got you to gotta self-check yourself that you could be in the room with somebody who's either on your level or higher than you, and you're not comparing yourself to anybody. So you got to learn how to step out and let this go. So the question is, what do you need? What area in your life do you need to just say, here it is right now in the middle of the year, because I decree and I declare that my next six months are going to be better than my first six months. Everyone stand. Everyone stand. Everyone stand. So, you're never so spiritual that the enemy cannot talk to you. I'm, if I can just get you to pay attention to me. Look at me. Um, the devil talked to Jesus. And sometimes when I go home, the enemy will try to torment me. That you didn't teach it right. That you didn't have enough power. Or that, watch me, or that they're just emotional. They'll never change. That is a torment. So then I begin to ask myself, God, am I doing my assignment? I begin to question me. And it becomes a weight on me. You have to hear me. This is not for you to get emotional. This is, I want you shouting and then going back home. And he's still in your house. He literally has to, he's going to honor you coming. He's going to honor you seeing him. He's going to honor your sacrifice. Now he said, now let me in your personal space. Let me, invite me into your personal space. Yo, don't pull back from me. Pull close to me. When I say personal space, can you bring this up? And the Bible says, Jesus said to him, today, today, salvation has come to this personal space. Because this man, too, watch this, is a son of Abraham. Stop right there. These are your benefits. You're not asking for something that don't belong to you. He said, I come that you might have life. You should not feel guilty for being blessed. 
you should not feel condemned for just being happy. People who are not happy want to make, no, today salvation has come to your house to save you from ignorant people, to save you from burdens, to save you from people who don't mean you any good. I got to save you. For the Son of Man came to seek you out and to save you from being considered as the lost. I want you to listen to me. So I knew a gentleman who was struggling. He had get laid off and he was fighting, trying to survive. I mean, he was just running around, getting the best of him. And he ended up having a stroke. And as they were putting him in, in the ambulance, he kept saying, I'm good, I just need a job. I'm good, I just need a job. I'm good, I just need a job. And on his way to the hospital, his organs just start shutting down. Just start shutting down. Because he thought, that's all I needed. But even when you get a job, for some people, it's still not going to be enough. So how about we just save you? Because if we save you, we'll save your house. Because you're the strong one. Everybody stand to your feet. Turn and tell somebody. Say, the God of a breakthrough is about to come through. Say it again. 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 You are the God of a breakthrough. You are the We worship you. God of a breakthrough. God of a breakthrough. You are the God of breakthrough. What do we do? We worship you. We what? We worship you. Everybody say. God of a breakthrough. <laughs> Come on. God of a breakthrough. Yeah. You are the God of a breakthrough. What do we do? We worship you. We worship you. Everybody say. Yay! Listen, there are several of you in this building that I have to give you space. I need you to get out of your seat and you come to the altar. That you just need a moment on the altar. This is not the cry of salvation yet. This is the cry of deliverance. If stress, you're being pulled, you're being yanked on, and that thing is beginning to weigh you out. Come and stand on this altar. Come and stand on this altar. God of a breakthrough. You are God of a breakthrough. You are the God of a breakthrough. We worship you. We worship you. God. God of a breakthrough. God of a breakthrough. You are the God of a breakthrough. And we worship you. We worship you. Oh, God of a breakthrough. God of a breakthrough. You are. 
What do we do? And we worship you. This is how I fight my battles. We Everybody say. Everybody say. This is how I fight. And we worship you. We worship. 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 We worship you. We worship you. Hey! We worship you. We give you glory. We worship you. We praise you. We worship you. We worship. We worship you. We worship you. Look at me. You can't leave it with that thing on you. It has to be canceled before you walk out this door. The only way that you could keep doing what you're doing is that you got to get this up off of you. You are at your best when you're not being pulled on. So the Lord say, I am here today. I want to show you this scripture. Look at the screen in Isaiah 45. I will go before you I'm already in your July your August your September your October your November in your December I will go before you and will level the mountains certain things that you had to climb over he said no you are about to not have to climb over anything I'm about to level those things that used to be your challenge not only am I going to level your mountains, watch me, I will break down gates of bronze. I will break down, I will break down, I will break down. Why? Because I am the God of a break. I will break down gates of bronze. And then I'm going to cut through. I'm a break and then I'm a cut through. I'm a cut through bars of iron. I'm a break through. I'm a break through so that you can have access to make sure that what stressed you out in the past won't be your issue in your future. But it cannot happen unless you open your mouth and give me glory. Glory! Can 
you shout like you've lost your mind and a chain is going to break. The God of a breakthrough is coming in your direction. One, two, three. Shout. today. He's the God of your breakthrough. Immediately today, He is the God of your breakthrough. Immediately today, immediately today, immediately today, it has been canceled. It has been canceled. It has been canceled immediately today. Immediately today. Can I hear your worship in the building? I need to hear your sound of worship. Cut the music. Yay! Glory! Come on, there's a sound that goes with freedom. Yay! There's a sound when the burden has been lifted. Lift up your voice. Like a trumpet in Zion. Come on, y'all. Open your mouth like that thing is gone. That thing had you muzzled. But now you can open your mouth. Glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody said, why does he always have y'all talking and saying something? Because the power of life and death is in your tongue. And you are like the anointing that was on Samuel that his words did not hit the ground. What you speak becomes your reality. Yedama, shake Come on, y'all. I need you to do me a favor. If you're standing next to somebody, I need you to reach over and say, hey, hey, it has been canceled. The devil wanted to kill you in your sleep, but God just canceled it. The enemy wanted you to have a heart attack, but God just canceled it. The enemy wanted to tear your business up, but God just canceled it. The enemy wanted to have your children, but God just open your mouth. Open your mouth. What have I told you that deliverance was in your voice? What have I told you when you speak it, it's going to happen for them? Reach up and touch the neighbor and say, it has been canceled. It has been canceled. 
so I come against the weight of it I come against the worry of it I come against the burden of it the weight has been lifted I cancel your worry come on y'all you gotta be spiritual to do what I tell you to do touch your neighbor say it has been canceled you're a mighty man of God the anointing of God is on your life if he was gonna let the enemy kill you you would have been dead a long time ago why would I bring you to this point and let you die now the devil is a bluffer the devil is a liar you better speak life in here you better speak life in here you know a friend that's been going through you know somebody that's dealing with some stuff you go get them tell them it has release a praise for the cancellation your funeral just got canceled your injury just got canceled you're not breaking you're not gonna lose your mind you're about to be stronger than you've ever been you're about to be better than you've ever been that praise ain't quite where I need it to be yet. And I can't move on until I know that he's pleased with the praise. Come on, y'all. On the count of three, I need the praises to outnumber the spectators. Release the praise right here. One, two, three. Go. Go in. Holy Ghost speak in tongues get lost in it go out into the deep you in a safe space you might not have this chance again you better live for your children you better live for your promise there's a promise on your life. Shake under the bow shaking. Walk in the liberty where with Christ has set you free. Walk in the liberty. I get the Lord say, tell him to make three steps. Take three steps. Walk in the liberty where with Christ has set you free. Now don't go back there. Be not entangled again. I got you today. Come on, let me get these souls where before I get them, I need you to cancel it again. I cancel every thought of suicide. I cancel every attempt of suicide. I cancel every enemy that's coming after you. I cancel every witch and every warlock. I cancel every negative word that's been spoken over you. I cancel every negative prophecy that came in your direction. The devil is a liar. He's about to protect you from dangers seen and unseen. Everybody lift your hands and worship God for the canceling.
I see you. I see you. And that's why I got you here. I see you. I feel you. I am touched by the feelings of your infirmity. I feel you in here. And I hear the enemy telling you that you're not going to make it. But all that has been canceled. I'm trying to come down. Yeah, my shire. Everyone stand for one minute. There are about eight of you in this building that you're in the right spot. That he's saying, come down immediately. You cannot do this thing called life without God. But some of the stuff I go through, and I'm barely making it with him. I don't know how you think you're going to make it without him. He is a very present help. But you got to throw your hands up and surrender to him. And if you know I'm talking to you, there's a call of salvation and there's a call of discipleship. Because some of y'all, you say, you just won't commit to a church. Well, I don't need the church. Oh, but you do. Because you need an army to fight with you. You need backup in the spirit realm. You can't live this without a village. It is not good for man to be alone. We sharpen one another. And if you know I'm talking to you, don't make me beg you to get from up under that thing. Get out of your seat and come down here immediately. Start walking right now. Move. Move immediately, like it's a nine one one. Stand here. Immediately. Immediately. There are five more people that are supposed to be up here. There's four more people that are supposed to be up here. There are four more people that are supposed to be up here. There are four more people that are supposed to be up here. Get out of your seat. Because it is a 911 situation. There are three more people that are supposed to be up here. And who are you that God would keep coming after you? There's one more person that's supposed to be up here. Get up here. Turn and ask your neighbor, are we waiting on you? If they tell you yes, you bring them to me. Because it's too much at stake. here this is not an accident you're literally in the right spot and he sees you and he's concerned about you come on some more coming <laughs> pressure is real pressure is real Pressure outside of God produce sickness. Pressure in God produce oil. Get out of your seat. Because we're supposed to get oil out of this. I'll count down. Is somebody else supposed to be up here? 10, 
nine, eight, seven, six, five. I need y'all to praise God like somebody just got snatched out of hell. Four. Three. I hear the Lord talking real loud. Hold on, hold on. I'm only going to repeat what I hear in the spirit. Hold on. You have given everyone else a chance but me. You tried everything but me. Hear the Lord. I've held it up waiting on you to call on me. It's still available, but you can't get it without me. I'll count down one more time. Ten. Nine. Intercessors pray. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Don't walk up on me after church time. You was waiting on me, past that. I'm going to push you in your face. And then lead you to the Lord. <laughs> Two. Two. Then one, I need you all to do me a favor. You're going to turn around and you're going to follow these people down this aisle. Can y'all have a seat and celebrate souls? Have a seat and celebrate souls. Everyone hear me. Everyone hear me. Life is real. It is real. And I need God to see me where I am, not where people expect me to be. I say that again. I need God to see me where I am and not where people expect me to be. Because if you see me where I am, you'll, deliver, you'll never deliver me from hypocrisy. But if I can be open, honest, and transparent with God, he'll see me exactly where I am. Some of y'all know when you're at your breaking point, too. Today, the Lord told me to tell you, I see you, and I hear you, and I honor you being in the right location, in the right spot. Now you're going to have to make some sacrifices. You have to make some changes. You are. And don't feel guilty about the changes that you make. Because the changes that you're making are good for you. It's okay. I want us to get our tithes ready. Tithes is, we don't even question that, those of us that believe in it. It's just what we do. For everyone else, I want you to hear me. I want you to sow a seed for your house, for your family. I give you four options, 23, 46, $69, or $92. Out of those four seeds, which can you sow for your house, for your family? Money cannot always be your issue. Some say, oh, I was going to give more. Then you give what the Lord tells you to give. But if everyone under the sound of my voice in the building online, if you sow one of those four seeds, we continue to do what we do. We continue to move this cross. We continue to feed the hungry. We continue to go after the lost. We continue to purchase the land that God has given us. How are we able to do it? God bless his people. And then his people take the responsibility of blessing the house. You can text and give. You can get the QR code. But everybody can sow something. If you don't have the 23, then you get the best seed that you can. What is this for? I'm sowing into my house. 
I need God to do something in my house for my family. When the woman fed Elijah, the Bible says here, her house and her entire family were taken care of, all because she released the oil and the meal. Come on, get the seat in your hands, stand to your feet. If you need an envelope, if you write a check, you make it out to NOCSE. You put in the deposit box on your way out. I need you all to pray for me. This is a heavy week. For all of y'all that are going to serve in 12-hour prayer, we're going to meet here on Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Wednesday, we're going to do Angel's Funeral in this building. Thursday, we have Bible study. Friday, we get 12-hour prayer. Strengthen, Lord. I'm so, how many of y'all remember I used to do all 12 hours? I'm so glad he freed me up from that. Come on, everybody stand. Let's go home. Y'all sitting here like this is shut in. Stand up. Let's go home. Lift your seat up to the Lord. Repeat after me. I'm a tither and a giver. And I am blessed beyond measure. I have more than enough. I'm living in my overflow. I am living in Ephesians 3.20 for the rest of my life.